Hello viewers and welcome back to our channel, your go-to place for all things Montessori. I'm thrilled to have you here with us as we delve into a couple of key Montessori terms today, normalization and deviation. Now they might sound a little technical and heavy, but trust me, understanding these terms can truly transform how you see your child's development. So are you ready to explore? Let's go. To begin with, let's talk about normalization. Now in Montessori terms, this isn't about fitting into a box or sticking to the normal. No, it's far more powerful than that. It's a process of self-discovery where a child finds their inner balance and concentration. It's when they become completely immersed in an activity, fully engaged and completely in tune with what they're doing. I want you to take a moment to picture this. There's a child who's deeply focused on arranging the pink wooden cubes from largest to smallest, building a tower. Their eyes are sparkling with curiosity. Their little fingers are delicately moving each piece into place. Or maybe it's a child lost in the world of painting. Their brush strokes are reflecting their thoughts. Their canvas is a riot of colors and emotions. This state of deep engagement, this profound connection with their work, it isn't just a random occurrence. It's an inner journey, a transformation, if you will, where they move from a state of disorder and distraction to one of order and focus. This journey is unique to every child and it happens in its own time. What's even more amazing is that this focus, this inner balance, isn't limited to just the task at hand. Over time, it spills over into other aspects of their lives, molding them into self-disciplined, confident and respectful individuals. They learn to enjoy the process of learning, develop a sense of order and a respect for their surroundings. A normalized child, as we say in Montessori, is a joyous child, one who radiates happiness, calmness and purpose. They are genuinely engaged in their tasks. They're peaceful and they demonstrate a love for work and learning. This is what normalization is all about. So you're probably asking, how can I identify a normalized child? It's a good question. A normalized child is a picture of joy and contentment. They're not just playing, they're wholeheartedly immersed in their activities. They found something that they love doing and they're focused on it with a sense of purpose. Now here's something you can, you can try and picture, okay? There's a child carefully washing a plant. Their little hands are brushing over their leaves. Their eyes are sparkling with interest. Or maybe they're at their table sorting wooden blocks by size. They're not rushing. They're not fumbling. They're taking their time to explore each block, cherishing the task that they're doing. It's almost as if they're in their own blissful world. This, my friends, is a glimpse of normalization in action. But there's more to it than just deep concentration. A normalized child also exhibits a love for order. They value their work area, their materials, and their environment. After finishing a task, they return the materials to the right place, ready for next use. It's their way of showing respect and taking responsibility. You will also notice a normalized child by their peaceful demeanor and their respect for others. You see them waiting for their turn, helping a friend or working quietly to, uh, to avoid disturbing others. This respect extends to themselves, their friends, their teachers, and even the materials that they work with. So you see a normalized child is a harmonious blend of concentration, love for work, respect for their surroundings, and above all, joy. That's the magic of normalization in the Montessori environment. The Montessori work cycle, which we've explored in a previous video, which I'll link right here, plays a crucial role in facilitating normalization. This cycle of choosing, exploring, concentrating and completing their work all at their own pace. This creates an environment for deep, enjoyable learning. Now, of course, not every day is filled with sunshine and rainbows, right? Sometimes our little ones may seem distracted, restless, or uninterested in their work. 
In Montessori, we call this a deviation. It's just a way of saying that the child is having a hard time finding their focus and getting deeply engaged. Deviation can take different forms. It could be fidgeting or running around, not showing too much interest in the activities, or even acting out a bit. But here's the thing. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the child. It's not about labeling them or saying they're naughty or hyper or thinking the worst. It's actually an opportunity for us to understand and support them in finding their way back to normalization. So let's imagine a scenario where a child keeps leaving tasks unfinished or he easily switches from one thing to another without focusing. In a conventional school, people would call them hyperactive or disruptive. But in Montessori, we see this as a sign that the child is still searching for that activity which will capture their interest and help them get back on track, get them concentrated. Sometimes it's about the environment. Maybe the activities available are not matching what their current interests or their needs are. It could even be a phase where they're exploring different things and figuring out what they enjoy. Our role as adults is to observe listen and create an environment that meets them, that sparks their curiosity and brings them back to the learning flow. So let's approach deviation with understanding and patience. Instead of seeing it as a problem, let's see it as a clue, a signal for us to provide the right opportunities and support for the child to re-engage with their learning journey. It's about finding the spark that activity or that experience that grabs their attention and gets them back in the zone. As parents and educators, our role is crucial in supporting normalization. We have the opportunity to observe and make adjustments to the environment, or we can provide guidance to help the child to get back to that deep state of engagement and their enjoyment in learning. Now let's look at some common situations both in the classroom or at, or at home, where a child might experience deviation. And let's explore how we can help them as adults to find their way back. Now imagine a child in the classroom who just doesn't show interest in the activities that are laid out on the shelf. They might be fidgeting, they're not engaging, they're becoming disruptive. In this case, what we should do is observe their interests and their preferences. Maybe they have a special fascination with animals. So then what we can do is we can introduce related activities like creating an animal habitat or inviting them to explore books about animals, exploring with the model animals or jigsaw puzzles of animals. By aligning their interests with the learning experiences, we can spark their curiosity and reignite, reignite their engagement, connecting them to the materials. Now, how about a child at home who appears restless and is easily losing focus on their tasks, whether it's homework or even a creative project? Here, we can create a calm and inviting study area, free from any distractions. We can provide a clear routine, set realistic goals, and this will also help them to stay on track. Additionally, giving them short breaks for movement, giving them sensory tools like stress balls or fidget toy toys, this can assist them in maintaining focus. By adjusting the environment and offering appropriate tools, we can help them channel their energy and concentration effectively. In both the classroom and the home settings, it's important to provide a variety of choices and opportunities for, for exploration. Children have unique interests and learning styles. So give them a range of activities, and this can help them find their personal path to normalization. Whether it's hands-on experiments, artistic activities, or nature explorations, we can create an atmosphere that nurtures curiosity and invites joyful learning experiences. Remember, each and every child is unique and there's no one-size-fits-all approach to normalization. It's a journey of self-discovery for each child, and our role is to be attentive, understanding, and flexible. By observing their needs, adjusting the environment, and providing guidance tailored to their interests and learning styles, we can support them in finding their own joy 
and engagement in learning. So as we wrap up our chat today, I hope this discussion about normalization and deviation gives you a fresh understanding of your child's actions and behaviors. These terms may sound heavy or fancy, but actually they reveal powerful insights into your child's journey of self-discovery and learning. You see, normalization means that when your child is deeply involved in their activities, fully focused and feeling happy, it shows that they're finding their own balance and concentration. It's like their love for learning is shining through. Now let's talk about deviation. It's not about labeling or thinking something is wrong with the child. It's more like a sign that they're struggling to stay engaged. But don't worry, it's a chance for us to understand and support them in finding their way back to that deep engagement. We adjust the environment, we observe what interests them, and we offer them guidance that matches their needs. So armed with this understanding, you can better connect with your child and respond to their actions and behaviors. It's about creating an environment where learning can thrive, where children can thrive, they can find their joy in learning and embark on their own exciting journeys. If today's topic sparked a light bulb moment for you, hit that like button. And for more such Montessori wisdom, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Let's continue this enlightening journey together. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your precious time today. I look forward to our next chat. And until we meet again, have a beautiful day.